All right, Jeff Zimmerman here. I'm with the light middleweight champion of the world, Tim Zhu. Got his big fight here in Las Vegas, Sin City, March 30th against one-time Keith Thurman, opening up Amazon Prime's pay-per-view. How you doing, champ? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's, it's been a long road. Um, I'm very well. Very well, thank you. Yeah, man. And I, I want to talk about your road a little bit. Um, you're the son of a legend, the son of a, a Hall of Famer, Katsu Zhu. What, what was it like growing up with your dad being a fighter and, and that now a Hall of Famer? Yeah, look, my, my upbringing, I'd say my dad was like a military sergeant, you know. Um, when you describe, everyone describes their father as a, as a real life superhero, you know. You, everyone grows up seeing their father as that. Well, my dad was was an actual real life superhero, you know. So, so growing up, um, I, I saw it all from the from the glitz, from the glamour, from the good, from the bad. Uh, boxing isn't just uh, what people see. There's a lot to it, and I got to see everything involved with it growing up. You saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. It sounds like that's that's exactly right. Yeah, and and you didn't you started off young. And then you kind of went away from the sport a little bit, right? In your teen years? Yeah, I think my parents sort of did everything to to prevent me to, to pursue the sport. But it would always uh it would always bring me back. I've always grown up in a boxing gym, so it was always something that was part of my life. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, you know, you break out on the scene, um, you, you beat a former Olympian and 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 uh Gasha. Um, and then you uh, take on um, the the Harrison. super Harrison and, and make a statement stopping him. Does it? You you said it's been kind of a long ride, but it feels like you've kind of burst onto the scene these last few years. Yeah, the the last few years since I have started taking that that international step and taking on credible opponents, I think that's when it's sort of just gone uh, viral. So again, you. You fight in the pub shows. You fight in small little shows to get to the to the ultimate stage, and and this is where the ultimate stage is right now. And and obviously you're a hero back home in Australia, and you, but you're becoming a, a USA star. It seems like you're at the Super Bowl doing the media row. Do, do you feel like you're you're becoming bigger and bigger each day here in the states? Um. I see how America is and, and I've enjoyed the whole process about it. Um, of course, there is, it's another nation to conquer and I'm enjoying the whole ride about it. And of course, popularity comes into it and, and people start following you and, and, and there's more support, of course. But that's, that's part of boxing, you know. It's, it's all about, I guess, the journey. Yeah. Yeah, and and where did you become so media savvy? Because you seem like a real quiet guy, but then you're up there on the dais with a guy in Keith One Time Thurman, who I've interviewed <laughs> for this fight. You know, calling you Mexican Zoo. What are you gonna do? And and doing some verbal sparring. And I would say, man, you held your own pretty good. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people have seen that side of you. Yeah, you know what? It, it's all about standing up to it and, and and the theatrics of boxing. And I've sort of embraced it, you know. I've sort of just always been um, business, business, business. But I'm enjoying the whole process of it. Someone's going to talk smack and, and, and talk a bit of rubbish. Then I'm going to be the one answering back, of course. Uh, the best thing about the sport that I do is that we get to punch them in the face as well with it. So uh, a bit of banter um, never hurt nobody. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I. I'm from, I live in Dallas, so I've covered Errol Spence's career and kind of the same way, right? Real stoic, real, you know, just goes, goes about business. But if you, if you ask him a question, he'll give you a good answer. In fact, I asked him one time when he was about 15 and 0, and he, he wanted to, you know, fight Keith Thurman back then. And he said to me, Keith Thurman thinks he's the big bad wolf and nobody wants to fight him yet. He was ready to fight him. So you kind of remind me of him. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, sometimes the less you talk, uh, the more confident you are. Uh, the loudest one in the room is probably the most insecure one in the room. 
Yeah, and you talked the other day too, you mentioned uh, about kind of, there's not a lot of like old school guys anymore, kind of throwbacks, you know, you mm. consider yourself one. I can. I thought of Spence as one, Crawford, mm. another guy. There's another guy in Dallas, Virgil Ortiz. Um, are, are those guys that you would consider kind of that throwback mentality? Um, to a certain extent, um, Errol Spence, he's, he doesn't fight often though, you know, like, um, throwback, I think of Roy Jones, I think of, uh, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, uh, all these guys. Um, I think we, we live in a different era right now to, to, to be even mentioned with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think though, as your career starts to take off and, you know, you get bigger and bigger, the money gets better and better. It seems like that's what it's kind of the business of boxing. That's kind of preventing these guys from fighting more. I, I see the politics involved. Um, I understand that back in the days it would have been much easier because there, there wasn't so many networks and promoters and belts, you know, another thing belts, um, you know, if, if if we could make just one belt and everyone fights for that, that way there's there's one champ in each division. Um, wouldn't that be lovely? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, you you win the WBA, WBO belt. Um, you know, you, you got the interim title versus Harrison. Then you fight Mendoza. Do you still want to crack at Charlo? Because that, that was the fight you really wanted. 100%, you know. And the, the thing is, Charlo doesn't have any belts right now. And and that's what makes it even more anticipated for me. Like, I'll fight him with no belts, you know? Like, it it doesn't matter. Let's make it – let's prove who's the best 154-pounder alive right now. And, um, yeah, that, that's that's my mentality. But I think Charlo's in another world right now. He's, he's not even thinking about boxing. Yeah. What about if uh, Spence and Crawford go to 154 and I mentioned Virgil Ortiz, would, would you take those guys on right now? 100%. No questions asked. If they give me any of those three names right now, a contract, give me a pen. I'll sign it straight away. No problem. Who, who, who would be your toughest test, do you think? I think, um, I think Crawford right now has, has earned the right to – to say he's the the number one pound for pound, um, so I think he would be yes. What what would you and Virgil look like? I, I, it seems like it would be fireworks. Man, that'd be crazy. That'd be a crazy fight. That'd be a, a bloodbath, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. Um, he's been waiting for that big fight himself. You know, obviously he's dealt with a lot of health issues the last couple of years, but. Uh, you you would share the ring with them. Oh, for sure, man. There's nothing but respect for that with, with Virgil, you know? Like he's he's a he's a warrior. Um Oscar, on the other hand, he's he's out of control. <laughs> In what sense? I don't know, just uh just I don't know, he seems like he's off his head at all at all the time. So uh Virgil's got a good head and um if that fight is easy to make then then of course I'd, I'd welcome it with both hands and and speaking out of control and i'm here with tim zoo light middleweight champion of the world um ryan garcia has been out of control the last couple of weeks and he's got the fight of his life against devin haney um you know we were talking a little, little bit earlier about you being media savvy i mean is it is it him promoting is there do you think there's something else going on there what, what's your read on it just from the outside um, from the outside, I see that his name is being mentioned everywhere and there's no such thing as bad media, right? If your name is getting mentioned in every article, every story, then, then you're doing something right. So I think he's doing a good job doing what he's doing. And if he, if he is really standing up for something that he really believes in, um, and certain issues that's going around the world, then that's, that's his word, you know? Yeah. He's, he's got a platform to be able to to explore it. But at the same time, keep politics and all that life stuff away. You, you we're, in, we're in a sport where we, we punch each other in the face. Like, let's not get anything else involved besides that. 
Yeah. Do you find yourself when you're training and getting ready like you are now, you got the biggest fight of your career to date with Keith Thurman. Do, do you feel like you got to get rid of all the distractions around you to like really focus? I mean, or can you, is it easy? I mean, it must be hard to juggle. Uh, look, it, it gets hard, but the bigger you get, the more money that comes into your bank account, the, the more pressure, the more priorities you're going to receive. So, you know, it's completely understandable. Um, someone that fights for $200 doesn't go through the same type of uh, mentality and pressure that I have to go through. So it's part of the business and I embrace it. You know, I can't complain. There's a lot of people in the world that are doing, that are, that are struggling in life, you know. I'm doing a sport I love. I get to punch people in the face. I get to live the live life the way I want to. I can't complain at all whatsoever. Yeah. Who who do you like in that fight? Taking, you know, obviously the stuff going on, but who who do you like in that fight? With he Haney, Haney, and, Haney and, and Garcia. Yeah. Um I respect I respect Garcia for taking on the big fights, you know. Uh but I think Haney wins. I think he's slick. He's on a an upward type of uh like obsession right now he's doing very well yeah yeah and and we'll wrap up here in a minute um you know another big fight was announced um back in dallas at t stadium uh you got uh jake paul and mike tyson what are your oh, yeah. thoughts on these crossover fights or it's not even really a crossover fight i guess but what are your thoughts on that um it brings eyeballs first to the sport uh I love Mike Tyson. I grew up watching him, so I, I just hope he doesn't get hurt, you know. And I hopefully, hopefully, he sticks it up for boxing. <laughs> but Jake Paul, man, he's doing good things as well, you know. So it's both. It's it's weird. Like I wouldn't do it myself. Back, like I wouldn't. I wouldn't go down that path. I'm a purist uh, at heart. So I don't know. It's the the world's changing. <laughs> right. Right. Were you happy to see AJ knock out Ngannou just for being a purist and for the sport of boxing? Uh, to a certain extent, man. I love Ngannou's story. I like him as a person. Uh, but if it was boxing versus MMA, I was, I'm sort of like, you know what? These MMA fighters, they're coming into the boxing world and they're sort of like doing all right. So it was good to see. Like, even though I was... Oh, I'm a fan of both of them. Um, even though... Even though that, uh, it was good to see the boxing beat MMA in our own sport, the sport that we've been doing for our whole lives. Sure, sure. And um, talking about your fight with Keith Thurman, he's been to the top. He's been on the biggest stages. What What do you have to worry about him? You've talked about he's going to run like a gazelle. Is it going to be tracking him down and, and hunting him down? Is that what you're expecting? Because he was called mm -hmm. one time for a reason. But what 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 are the things that you have to watch out for? Just his uh, awkwardness, I guess, uh, being able to steal rounds. Um, but his, nick his nickname is going to change this fight. It's going to be from one time to last time. So there's going to be a change. And as you said, Bean, 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 um, he's done that. But now it's it's a different era. It's it's simple and plain. And do you feel like you've even reached the peak yet, Tim? Or you feel like it seems like you're getting better every fight, and that's why yeah, you I'm keep still, moving up. Yeah, still young, twenty nine years young. Um, I got one fifty four, one sixty, 160, one sixty eight to to conquer. So you know, there's there's a couple of weight divisions to go. Canelo Munguia, who, who do you like there at one sixty eight? Uh, Canelo, man, easy, easy work, like. Not a, not a, a walk in the park, in my opinion. And how long how long will you be at one fifty four? You mentioned one sixty, one sixty eight. How how long? Well, until 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 I I reach what I want to achieve in this in in the division, and that's it, and and get the biggest fights possible. All right, Tim Zhu, man, great. <laughs> Welcome to the U.S. I know you've been out here for a while, uh, living the dream. It sounds like. Um, how is Vegas? Do you like do you like being out in Vegas? Yeah, it's 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 cozy. It's home. Like you know, it's it's we're just here with a bunch with my team, just a bunch of blokes, and yeah, we, we all got the same goal, same focus, and each day we live 
uh, towards getting better. And um, March 30th, we find out, we show the world what we're made of. What should we expect on March 30th against Keith, one-time Thurman, Amazon Prime at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas? I'm coming in for the kill, man. So you know you're gonna you're gonna see you're gonna see uh, the best the best teams do out there, and whether he runs or he, whether he comes, it's gonna be an entertaining crack and fight. Expecting a knockout? Of course. All right, Tim. I appreciate it, man. Good luck, and I uh, hope to do this again soon. Yeah, nice to meet you, bro. Thank See you. Ya.